You gotta love the internet. There's 150 zillion answers to every question, trillions of thoughts and ideas, and more could've, would've, and should've than we can imagine. But where is that no-nonsense practical advice that we want right now? Here are some down-to-earth answers to one of the common problems we small business owners face every day. How to get known and build awareness in a local area. Well, the first thing we need to do is some research. If you don't live in the local area, it's vital to find out as much as you can about the local community. Spend a half a day in the local mall and see who's shopping in the area. Knowing whether you are dealing with a family market, busy professionals or retirees can give you a real head start. And while you're at it, also check out the local light industrial or trade zone to see who's shopping in these areas. If you've set up a business in a multicultural area, find out what communities are represented. It's always a good idea to talk to your local real estate agent, as they're usually the first people to identify population trends or changes. The local council and bureau of statistics may be able to provide you with a profile of the area. And don't forget the tourist market. Depending on where you are and what you're selling, they can be a great source of additional revenue. Next thing to think about is visibility and signage. In local areas, being visible to passing traffic is a great place to start. Make sure you've got professionally made signs that can be read by passing vehicles and pedestrians. This means keeping the wording to a minimum and using lettering that's easy to read in large fonts. A professional sign writer will help you design a sign that stands out. For instance, contrasting colours. Make sure the sign's facing the traffic. This may mean angling the sign in some cases. Take the time to drive and walk past to see where those good placement spots are. And if you're a retail outlet, look at signs above your awning that can be seen from across the road. Maybe hang signs under the awning or on the front of the awning, and don't forget to use light boxes for nighttime visibility. If you're in a complex or upstairs, make sure you've got directory board signage and door signage. See if you can include signs or flags in the stairwells or adjacent to your business. Retailers or Main Street businesses can use A boards if your council allows it, but make sure they appeal to your target market and promote things that are your competitive advantages. Try not to rely on just a price or a discount message. Investigate the opportunity to lease signs in the local area. A lot of councils now approve illuminated signs, especially in light industrial and commercial areas. Fees will vary depending on the amount of traffic that passes the sign, but fees of $500 to $1,000 a month aren't uncommon. These can be a great investment only if they pull in the leads. One client of mine has a sign on a major road which brings in four to five inquiries a week, which more than pays for the cost of the sign. Not sure if it'll work for you? Ask other businesses in the area who have signs. And don't forget to look at other signage opportunities. A bus stop sign can be very effective if it's used as a directional sign to your premises. This was a very cost-effective strategy for a physiotherapist who turned a positive into a negative when the view of his business was blocked by a bus shelter. A sign-written vehicle is also a great way of boosting awareness in the local area. The brighter the better, and try parking it on nearby streets or in a busy area where there's lots of attention. Just add a Perspex business card holder and in a creative way, you'll be distributing business cards and brochures. So if you're a local business, you need to think about local area marketing.